I'm Stephanie Jaworski of joybaking.com. Today we're going to make a chocolate genoise and this is what it looks like. We have two layers of the chocolate genoise. We're going to sandwich them together with raspberry jam and a chocolate mousse and then we're going to cover the whole cake with a chocolate ganache and even more chocolate mousse. So a chocolate lover's delight here. So the first thing that you will need to do is to preheat your oven to 350 degrees Fahrenheit, which is 180 degrees Celsius. And you will need two 9-inch round pans, that's 23 centimeters, and you can either butter the inside of your pans, or I'm just going to do a quick and easy today, and just spray the inside. And then what I'm going to do is to take a round of parchment paper. And put that on the bottom. That way we'll make doubly sure that our cakes don't stick to the bottom of the pans. And we're going to start by making our chocolate genoise. The first thing we're going to do is to sift our dry ingredients together. So I'm just using a strainer. If you have an actual sifter, you could use that. You will need three quarters of a cup, which is 90 grams. I'm using cake flour today, and cake flour is a low gluten flour, and that gives our genoise this really nice soft and tender crumb. And whoop, left a little there. And then you will need, because it's a chocolate genoise, you will need a half a cup, 45 grams of unsweetened cocoa powder. And you can use either the Dutch process, which I'm using here, or you could just use the natural unsweetened, either one. And a half a teaspoon, two grams, I'm using kosher salt. And then I've just got, you can do it over a bowl or I just have a piece of parchment paper. So I'll sip this. One, it aerates the mixture, and two, I find cocoa powder always has lumps, so the sifting gets rid of that. Okay, so a genoise is a type of sponge cake, but you know a lot of sponge cakes you separate the eggs. The difference here is we, with a genoise you don't separate the eggs, but what we do is we warm the eggs over you need a saucepan of simmering water. So put your, you need six large eggs which is 300 grams and put that in a uh, heat proof bowl. I like to use stainless steel. And to that, I'm going to add one cup, 200 grams of granulated white sugar. And we're just gonna mix all that together. And the reason we're going to uh, warm this over uh, simmering water is, one, it will, you know, warm the eggs, dissolve the sugar. And what this is going to do is when we whip our eggs, it's going to allow them to reach full volume. And the reason we want that is all of the leavening for this cake is in our, our beaten eggs. We're not adding any baking powder or soda. So just whisk that together. And then you just want that simmering, not boiling and whisk it constantly because we're we don't want to cook them we just want to warm them to just lukewarm to the touch okay so touching them lukewarm to the touch so remove from the heat and then put it on a on a cloth because we want to wipe the bottom of our bowl get rid of any you know condensation so what i'm going to do is just clean this up Come right back and we will whip our eggs. Okay, so now if you have an electric stand mixer like I have here, you want to use your whisk attachment. You could use just a hand mixer for this as well. So put that in there along with one and a half teaspoons, six grams of pure vanilla extract. That's for flavoring. And what I'm going to do is mix it or whip this on medium-high speed until it really it cools down, it really whips up nice and becomes very light and very thick. And while I'm doing that, in a small saucepan, I have four and a half tablespoons, 64 grams of unsalted butter. I'm going to melt that.
Okay, so look at that. Isn't that gorgeous? And if you lift it up, you can see it goes down in a slow ribbon. And then it slowly dissolves back in. So that's what you're looking for. So now we're going to have to add our dry ingredients. I find it easier if I have a bowl that's wide. Makes it so much easier. Although you could, you know, mix it right into your mixing bowl if that's if you don't have a bowl like I have, this large one. Okay. So now, we're not going to add all of our dry ingredients all at once. We're just going to, you know, put maybe a third over the top, like so. And then I have my spatula, and I'm just going to down and up, over, and just mix it in. Big strokes. And when you have most of it in, then we will add a little more. We don't want to deflate, I mean, we're going to deflate the batter somewhat, but we're trying to deflate it as little as possible when we add our dry ingredients. Scrape around the side and then Looks good, and I'll just do the last. Yeah, it looks pretty good. I'm just going to scrape off my spatula here because that cocoa powder does tend to stick to it. Now, I melted the butter, but it's still, you want to have it like lukewarm because we're going to have to add it to the batter. If you add it like if it was too cold, then it would kind of solidify when it hits the batter and deflate it even more, which we don't want. So have it lukewarm. And just sure, you want to make sure you get the bottom of the bowl and get all that those dry ingredients mixed in. So I'm happy with that. Looks pretty good. So now, I have my butter. I'm not going to pour that in here. What I'm going to do is take some of my batter and put it into here. Kind of like I'm tempering it, almost. And mix it in. That way it will mix a lot easier into our, when we put it into our batter. A little bit of technique here, but don't, you know, do the best you can. We all have to learn sometime. Scrap that off. And then, oh, some dry. Make sure I got that all mixed in. Okay, we're good. So I'm just going to pour that in there and mix this in. And the butter's going to give it, you know, a little buttery flavor, but a really nice tender crumb to our genoise. Okay, I think we're good to go. So now what we want to do, move this over here is we want to evenly divide our batter between our two pans. So if you have a scale, I mean, you could eyeball it, but if you have a scale, it's a lot easier. We're going to put about um, 340 grams per pan. Make sure to zero your scale. Yeah. So now, Give a little tap on there. Everyone's oven is a little different. I find probably 15 to 18 minutes. You will rise when you touch them. 
it'll firm to the touch and you will notice that the cakes start to shrink just a little bit from the sides of the pan so somewhere like 15 to 18 minutes So, cakes are done. I put a toothpick into the center, came out clean. If you touch it, it's firm, and they're just beginning to pull away from the sides of the pan. So put your uh, cake pans on a wire rack. We are going to let them cool completely in the, the pans before we take them out. So I'm going to put that to the side. And what we're going to do now while those are cooling is we're going to make a soaking syrup. So you just need a small saucepan and you need a half a cup, 120 milliliters, 120 grams of, I'm using filtered water. And then just a quarter of a cup, 50 grams of granulated white sugar. And I'm going to put this over medium high heat. So what I'm going to do is bring this up to a boil. What I want to do is just dissolve the sugar, basically. So I want to warm the water to dissolve the sugar. So give it a stir every once in a while and let it come up to a boil. Okay, so we're up to a boil. I'm going to remove it from the heat. And now I'm going to let this cool. I, I am going to add one and a half tablespoons of Grand Marnier for flavoring to this, but I don't want to add the Grand Marnier while the, the uh, sugar syrup is hot. So I'm going to let it cool. Now, if you don't want to add the Grand Marnier, you could add like orange juice or I mean, really, it's, it's very good just on its own, but for other flavorings, you could add, like I said, orange juice or some other juice. You could add a little bit of vanilla extract. And what we're going to do, this is a, a sugar syrup, or you can call it a soaking syrup, because what we're going to do is soak our cake layer or brush our cake layers with this. And what it's going to do is add a nice flavor, but it also keeps the Genoise nice and moist so the cake will last a lot longer. Now, you could make this up to two weeks in advance and then just store it in the refrigerator. So it's one thing you could do you know, ahead of time. So what I'm gonna do, let that cool, then add my Grand Marnier, and let those cool completely, and then we'll take them out of the pans. So our Genoise has cooled completely in the pan. So I'm gonna take a straight edge, just run it around the outside just to make sure it's not sticking. And then take a wire rack, flip it, and just peel off the parchment paper. So, and then I'm going to flip it so it's right side up. What's great is because this uh, cake has so many components, you could make your chocolate genoise a day or two ahead of time, wrap it really well, and you could store it in the refrigerator, or you could even freeze them for up to a month. So now, our next component is the chocolate mousse. This is a really ch easy chocolate mousse, really just a chocolate and whipping cream. It's so good. So you will need a saucepan of simmering water. And then in a heat-proof bowl, I like stainless steel, you will need five ounces, which is 140, five, yeah, 140 grams of semi-sweet chocolate, your favorite. You want to use a good quality here because your mousse is only going to taste as good as your chocolate. So really good quality chocolate. I'm using uh, a semi-sweet, about 58% cocoa content. I'm using the disc. If you were using like a chocolate bar, coarsely chop it. And then we are just going to put it over our simmering water until it's nice and melted. Okay, so our chocolate has melted. So I'm just going to take that off the heat. I'm going to let it cool down just a little bit, but while that's happening, 
move this out of the way. Lots of stuff going on here. I'm going to use my stand mixer with a whisk attachment, or you could use your hand mixer. Really, if you want, you could whip your cream with a wire whisk. You will need one cup, 240 milliliters, 240 grams of cold, heavy whipping cream. By heavy whipping cream, I mean cream with about a 35 to 40 percent butter fat content. And what that means is when I beat it, it will hold stiff peaks. So that's how you know. And then I'm going to, you don't have to, but I like to add just a little bit of sugar, one tablespoon, 15 grams of granulated white sugar. Now what I'm going to do is beat this medium high speed. I'll start low so it doesn't come up in my face until soft peaks. You don't want really stiff peaks here because we're going to add the, the cold cream into our chocolate. So you want it like soft, but I'll show you. Okay, so you can see it's not really stiff, still soft. Now, if you did by accident beat it a little too much, what you could do is just add a little more cold, heavy cream in there and whisk it to kind of loosen it up. But I'm okay with that. So now, you want your chocolate to have cooled down a bit so it's not like hot. It's kind of like body temperature. You don't want it, you know, too cold because then if you add the uh, cold cream to the cold chocolate, it'll kind of seize and you'll get little pieces of chocolate in there, which we don't want. So, and you don't want to add all of your cream into your chocolate at one time. We want to do this in stages and that helps to prevent us, our chocolate from seizing. And you want to use a whisk and you want to really whisk it in, especially right at the beginning. So what I do is I just kind of take a little bit and then quickly whisk it in. Almost like tempering the chocolate. And then once you've done that, you can add a little more. Big strokes. You know, don't be tentative. <laughs> be confident. Okay, and then I'll add the rest. And oh, I could just eat this right like <laughs> it is so good. Actually, you can just serve it like this in a glass in a small glass. For dessert really easy dessert to make everyone will love it okay I'm just gonna make sure we got all the no streaks and then we're going to layer put this on our in between our cakes I find it easier if I uh, put my chocolate mousse in a piping bag and pipe it. I mean, you don't have to, you could just spread it, but if you have a piping bag, then why not use it? So I'm using just a half inch plain tip that's about one and a quarter centimeters. Put that into your, and then what I like to do, just so it does, the mousse doesn't come out the end, is just twist and kind of stick that in there like that. And then if you find it easier, you can put your piping bag into a glass, kind of like that, and pour it in. So I'm going to do this, and then we'll have that ready. And so what I'm going to do is, when we come back, I'll set everything up, and we will put our cake together. So we're ready to assemble our cake. If you have a cake turntable, you want to use that. If not, just put it on a plate. And then what I like to do when I'm doing layer cakes is I like to use these uh, cardboard cake circles. You can buy them online or cake decorating stores. I'm using a nine inch, 23 centimeter. And the reason I like, it's easy to pick it up, take it. If you wanted to take this cake somewhere, it's really easy to pick it up and uh, move it around. So we did make our soaking syrup. So what I want to do is just brush 
the top of the cake with some of that. Like I said, this is going to one, add flavor to our cake, and two, it's going to keep it um, nice and moist so that our layer cake will last a little longer when we store it, which is always a good thing. Actually, it's a trick you can use with any cake is to uh, brush it with a soaking syrup. Sometimes maybe if you overbake the cake a little bit, soaking syrup would be really good for that. Okay, so now I'm just going to flip it. So what I want is the top of the cake to be on the bottom. So then we'll have a nice flat surface when we pour, because we're going to pour the ganache over top, so a nice flat surface. So again, I'm going to brush this side with the syrup. Whoop. And you will notice if it's a freshly baked cake, it won't absorb as much syrup than if you had made this a day before or a couple days before. It will absorb even more. So that looks good. And now what I like to do is to spread on some raspberry jam. I think it like adds flavor and it also a nice contrast. It's tart and it's tangy to the richness of a chocolate cake. Now, you could uh, just use store-bought or homemade. You can go to our YouTube channel or to get the video or the joybaking.com website to get the recipe. And I, what I did, I made the homemade and then I strained it to get rid of the seeds. Or if you were buying it, you could um, buy seedless. Or if you like the seeds, sometimes I just, if I'm a little lazy, I just... Use the seeds. So I'm just using, you can use the back of a spoon, a knife. I'm using an offset spatula just to spread that out. I love raspberry jam. And if you didn't want to use raspberry, you know, you could use like apricot preserves or, I mean, you could just leave it off if you didn't want, or you could use some other type of uh, jam. I think apricot would be good here. That looks good. Put it right to the edge. And next, our chocolate mousse. So just let that... I'm going to let's move this out of the way for just a sec. What I like to do is I'm going to push it down, try to get rid of any air in the bag. And push it down and then turn it to seal and then I'll put that back. Now I'm going to do concentric circles starting on the outside and but like I said if you don't you're not comfortable piping then you could just spread it you know on instead of piping whatever you're comfortable with. We will have a little leftover chocolate mousse, which I have in the bag. Keep that, just cover it and put it in the fridge because if you remember, we're going to decorate, put swirls with the leftover. I'm just going to put a little, fill in those gaps. Okay. So now I'm going to, again, brush. See how level that is. Put it like that. That'll and then just kind of line it up and lightly press the top to compact to compact it. So and then again I'm going to brush finally the top. Okay, that looks good. So now we're going to even up our sides. I've got a flat edge here. And if you have a cake turntable, it makes it really easy. But really, you can just turn it if you have a plate. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put, we have a little edge there to our, um, cake, our uh, cake circle. So I'm just going to run it just to make the edges of our cake nice and smooth. If you found it wasn't 
You don't want any gaps. If you had a few, you, we can just put a little of the mousse in there. Because we want a nice smooth, and if your cake is not quite lined up, just line it up. You want it nice and smooth so that when we pour the ganache, it'll just go right down. So what we're going to do now, because this is kind of soft, I'm going to put it into the refrigerator to chill. You could chill in several hours, but I, what I'm going to do is let this chill overnight so it gets nice and cold and firm, and it's going to make it so much easier when we pour the ganache over the top. So that's what we're going to do. I'm going to, I'm going to put it in the refrigerator just like this until it you know, firms up, and then I'm going to cover it overnight. And then when we come back tomorrow, we're going to finish it off. So I let our cake chill overnight. So now we can make our chocolate ganache. A ganache is similar to a chocolate mousse in that we're using the same ingredients, chocolate and cream, only we're going to mix them together in a different way. First thing you need to do is in a heat proof bowl, I like stainless steel, put five ounces, 140 grams of semi-sweet chocolate. I'm using these discs. If you're using a chocolate bar, then coarsely chop it. And then you will need a saucepan and a half a cup, 120 milliliters, 120 grams, again, of heavy whipping cream. That's cream with a 35 to 40% butterfat content. So just put that in there. Along with one tablespoon, 13 grams of butter. And I just cut my butter into small pieces so it'll melt faster. So what we're gonna do is heat these two ingredients together over medium high heat just until the butter melts and it just starts to boil like around the edges you don't want it to boil too much because it will foam up so watch it carefully okay so there we go we're starting to foam up grab it before it does you don't want it spilling over and then you have to start again so just take your cream and pour it over the chocolate and what I'm going to do I'm just going to let this sit for a minute or two so it starts to melt the chocolate so now we're going to stir our ganache you can use a spoon or whisk or spat end of a spatula start in the center and then just let's get in the circle we don't want to whisk a lot of air into our ganache so Right. And then as you see, it start to melt, make bigger circles. You see? I'll switch over to my spatula now. And that is essentially chocolate ganache. You could at this point add a little bit of uh, like Grand Marnier or something like that, just a you know, half a tablespoon if you want to flavor your ganache. But I just like the, to taste the chocolate. So that's, now this is warm, plus it's quite thin, as you can see. And we're going to pour it over our cake. So the good thing about ganache, as it cools, it will thicken. So I'm just going to put this aside, let it thicken a bit, and then when we come back, we will pour it over our cake. So I did let the ganache sit for maybe five, 10 minutes. So as you can see, that's about what I want. And now, so I, I put the cake on a wire rack on a baking sheet because we're going to pour the ganache over the top and then it'll drip down and you can save all that strip down. And what's nice about when you let the cake chill overnight, it gets nice and cold. And that way, when we pour the ganache over and chill the ganache, it will still stay shiny. So that's another reason to chill your cake before covering. So now what I'm going to do is kind of pour this over the top and let it like drip down the sides.
as you can see, I didn't pour it all in the center. I kind of poured it around so that it will hopefully evenly drift down the sides. Hard to see at the front there. You don't want to handle the ganache like too much. So what I'm doing is just big strokes. Let it go down the sides. And I have to turn to see what I am doing. Oh, that looks pretty good. So I'm just gonna. So what you got to once you do that, then go around and just kind of you have some spots that are not covered. And what you can do because some does drip down, you can kind of take that and use it if you have to. I got a big spot here. But like I said, you don't want to um, fuss with this too much or you'll get streaks. Now some people, I did not do it because I chilled the cake and I don't find I have to. You could do a, what is called a crumb, co uh, crumb coat. Professionals do that, I mean, if you're going to sell this in a shop. And what you do is you first take some of the ganache and you put on a very thin layer of the ganache on your cake and you chill it and then you pour the ganache over top. You could do that, but I think this turned out really well. Now what you want to do, we do have some leftover. Do not waste it. You could, if there is any crumbs, which not, you could um, just gather all that up, put it in a bowl, chill it, and make little chocolate truffles from it. But we're not going to do that today. I'm going to just clean up the sides like that are on my cake board. And then what I'm going to do is just put this whole thing into the refrigerator to chill just until that ganache firms up because our last step is to pipe some of that leftover chocolate mousse on the top. So this is our finished cake. As you can see, the ganache is firmed up. It's gorgeous. Actually, you could just serve this cake just like it is, or you could put some raspberries on the top or some chocolate curls. But because we had some leftover chocolate mousse, we might as well use it and decorate the top. Now, when you take this out of the refrigerator, it's going to be really cold. I did let it warm up. And if it's still a little thick, which mine actually is to pipe, just take a little bit of heavy cream and thin it out. Just so we can pipe it. Now I am, so I got my piping bag, I am using a star tip. This is a Wilton 1M. You could really use any type of tip you want. So that looks good. So let's put my, and as always, you know, fold back. You could put it in a glass if you find that easier. And just take your chocolate mousse okay so. oh my tip gonna <laughs> there we go it happens there we go. Try to get the air out of there. So now if you have a turntable, again, put your cake on there. It makes it easier, but really you can just have it on your serving plate. And then I'm just, you can pipe whatever you want. I'm going to do some swirls. So I'm going to put one here and depending on how much chocolate mousse, that's how many swirls you're going to get, so I'll just see how this goes. Well, and try to get enough on here. You could put a, like a raspberry or some more chocolate curls on top of that. 
If you had some gold leaf, that would look very nice on the uh, ganache here. Let's see what I can do here. I did have enough. Okay, so there is our cake. I think it's gorgeous. Um, so what you want to do is put this back into the refrigerator to chill the uh, chocolate mousse. But actually, I find chocolate desserts do benefit from sitting for a while. So I really like to chill this overnight. And I find that way all the flavors, because we did do the syrup, soaking syrup, it's time to soak into the cake. That's what I like. So I am finish there and what we're going to do is try the one I made a couple days ago. You see I've already cut into it. <laughs> um, so when you cut a cake like this, I have a knife, but I have a glass of hot water and what I do is I put my knife in there to warm it up and then wipe it off and then do your cut. And do that between every cut and that way because otherwise you got all this stuff on here. If I do another cut, it's going to make it a little messy. So, so there we have it. Let's cut that. Okay. And try to, you know, this cake is better at room temperature. So take it out of the fridge, you know, maybe a half an hour before. And then if you're, if you're only going to take like one slice, you can just cut one slice and then let it sit out and warm up. Put that. A lot of cakes there. Um, neighbors are going to be happy. So now let's try some. Got to get some of that chocolate mousse and the ganache and the cake. <laughs> I love chocolate. This is like a great fix. You have that chocolate genoise, not overly chocolate, just has a nice, you know, really nice chocolate flavor that's, that's been flavored with our Grand Marnier soaking syrup. And then you have a little tartness. It's not really strong, but just that hint of that raspberry gem. And then, of course, the creaminess of that chocolate mousse. You, you know, use a good quality chocolate. And then we have the chocolate ganache. I mean, it's a perfect chocolate cake. Now, you can store this for several days in the refrigerator. If you don't have a cake dome, then what you could do is just get a cake box, one of those cardboard, uh, cardboard cake boxes, put your cake in there, wrap it in plastic, and you have your own kind of cake dome. So try this one. And until next time, I'm Stephanie Jaworski of joybaking.com.